welcome. Thanks for coming. Hey, in. thanks for having me, Mark. So we had the second round of the high school football playoffs. So now we've got neutral sites for the third round. We'll get into those neutral sites in a little bit. But, you know, we've been blessed with some great running backs throughout the area. Yes. And tonight we're going to take a look at a couple of those running backs who made big plays Thanks to their friends. Hey, you know, there's nothing more than I love the big play Blake breakdown with a lot of running backs, and this is going to be a trio of them. So let's go ahead and just dive right into this thing, Mark. Big play breakdown. Y'all know it's Sunday. Let's get hype. Look at this guy. You know who he is. You know his name, Joe Caswell. He is no stranger to the big play breakdown. Just go look at the old tapes. Let's break this one down. Taking a look, it's about the H-back and the puller on this situation. Look at Schultz leading the way, but how did he break out through this thing? Beautiful block right there. He held his man up, and Caswell did exactly what you expected. Grown man running. You know they lift weights out there in White House, right? They do a great job, but also in Perrysburg, they got a guy who do it just as well. Who is it? Houdini? No. It's our guy, the best football player in this area, and I'm not trying to hear from nobody. Connor Waldenzak, he is the man. He's got the plan. Let's take a look and see what he did again. Look at it. Mr. Hunt, he's doing an excellent job. He's going to come through and kick out block. You see Zimmerly there as well. But getting bodied by Bowden, we see you, 76, putting bodies on the ground. But number one, step one, you got to wrap up when you go to make a tackle. Step two, the play is never over until you hear the whistle blow. Mark, I didn't hear a whistle, did you? Nope, no whistle. It's, it's still going. It's three, where your eyes at? You got to find the man. Look at the offensive line. They even confused. But this is the man who can just get it done every single play. This is a great football player, and we're not even going to break down his defensive highlights. Now, heading on over to the scary Cherry Street where you get tricks or treats. And this right there did not feel good. That, that was a touchdown, by the way. But you got to look at the big man on the outside. Tana Huco. He's getting it done. If I butchered your name, young fella, just let me know. Here we go. Look at it. Chris Edmonds, he's not going to go down with an arm tackle, but a big run over right there on the goal line is what Chris Edmonds can do and he can give for you. They scored about three touchdowns in two minutes. Really good offense, high power. Shout out to Central Catholic for moving on and shout out to Chris Edmonds, a.k.a. the Hawk, for getting it done on Cherry Streets. Mark, that's our big play breakdown. Yeah, so Central Catholic, thanks for that last touchdown by Chris Evans. 21-0, a shutout over Avon Lake. So they're on to the Region 6 semifinals. They're going to take on Medina Highland. Yeah. That game is going to be played in Sandusky at Sandusky Perkins High School. What can Central Catholic do to get into the regional finals? <sighs> It's going to be ugly just like this last game. You're going to see Avon Lake-style defense, but Highland, they have an even better defense. So Tywan Clark and Edmonds, you're going to need them, and, and, and Tana Yuko as well. <laughs> you're going to need all those guys to step up and make plays because this defense is one of the stingiest defenses on paper. I think they've only given up maybe 20, 40 points all season long. This is going to be a headbanger, and also, guess what, Mark? they scratching their head from last year because they lost by three points. They're coming back with revenge on their mind, and for Central Catholic, they got to continue to play great defense yeah. and have good offense. Yeah, that defense for Central Catholic has yeah. been lights out as of late. In Division One at Perrysburg, as you saw, Connor Wallenzak yeah. leading the way. They get the victory. So now the Yellow Jackets will yeah. head down to Fostoria. They're going to take on Olentangy Liberty, the eight seed. Olentangy Liberty, Perrysburg's the four seed. That game, as we said, in Fostoria Friday night. Yeah, absolutely. And one thing we love, we, but the guy we just talked about, Connor Walden, Zach, but it's about TJ Tackett as well. That offensive line does a really good job. And one person that needs some credit is Coach Connor. He does a beautiful job scheming things up. And defensively, they know how to mix it up. And they're going to need to have their pass defense ready because Liberty took down Jerome, which is the higher rated team. So, hey, anything can happen here in this Division I, Region Two. But I like Perrysburg to be the upset and the dark horse in this region. So we, we root for them. And something to keep an eye on. Right now, the Perrysburg volleyball team, they're going to play at 6 o'clock Friday night in Dayton in the state mm. semifinal. Then you got the football team playing at 7 o'clock Friday in Faustoria. Certainly, there's been some discussions. Maybe the OHSAs will, will back off and allow something to go through so that parents can go to both games, fans and, and, yeah. and teammates can go to both games. But right now, that's going to be nearly impossible. Finally, in Michigan, Whiteford, they had another blowout yeah. win over Gabriel Richard. So in, in Michigan, you still have your home playoff game. So they're going to be at home on Friday taking on a White Pigeon team as the Bobcats look to roll on.
I, I love what the Bobcats are doing. Obviously, they've been rated the top team in the area for quite some time. But when you got Shea Ruddy, your quarterbacks, he could have got on a big play breakdown, too, with that special kick return he had. This is a special football team. I think they're on a magical ride. They just got to come through this week, take care of business, and limit the turnovers because they had a couple before halftime. And if they can minimize those types of plays, they'll be just fine, in my opinion.